In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to change the look and feel of the letters, the words, that you put on your screen in the titles. We'll be using the Title Designer. It's so full-featured, it will take several lessons to show you all that you can do, but we'll focus on the characters in this particular lesson. To trigger the title designer, you click to the left of the library on the T that takes you to your title room. The easiest way to design a title of your own is click on the default one, which is the simplest. It simply says my title and drag it down into your track number one, anywhere in your timeline. Then I can either double click on it or click on designer in order to open the title designer. This window is also scalable. You can make it larger or smaller depending on what works for you. When you start out, it simply says my title and it has all the options here. Let's go through a few of them to show you some of the kinds of ways you can change the appearance of words in your movie. I'm going to click on character presets and the right arrow will become a down arrow and it will give me 60 options of how my characters can look that are all pre-designed for me in PowerDirector. If I click on any of them, they will immediately show in my preview window. And this gives me an option to see different gradients, different color combinations, different outlines, different shades. I can pick anything I like. And so this gives me a, one to start with. It's also a good tool to learn how to build your own, and I'll show you more about that. So that's the character preset box. 60 options all set up for you that you can use right away, or you can actually edit. The next one is the font type. Now when I clicked on the character preset, it automatically set the font type to the Arial. Again, I can take my down arrow and I can change this to some other kind of font if I so choose. It also set this feature here, which is the font face. I can go ahead and change my font face from this yellowish color. I can even, let's switch over here to something in the green spectrum. And I'll click on OK. And now I've just changed my font face. I can adjust the kerning. I can adjust the line spacing, bold, italic, left, middle, or left centered or right justified. That's all in my font type box. Um, I'm going to undo the green here and so I can show you uh, the third item down on font, which is font face. Now font face is checked because that is a feature of this pre-designed character preset that I picked a moment ago. In fact, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, which reminds me there are two ways to change the size of your fonts. I'll go back to font type. One way is to go into the font type box and change it this way by just dragging and clicking. The other way is to go to any of the four corners and make it larger or smaller using the arrow. The third box I want to show you is the font face option under my objects. It gives me an opportunity to blur and I'll show you what that looks like. The farther you move it to the right, the more the shape and look of the characters become indefinite when the blur is set to zero, they're crystal clear. You can also change the opacity. That's the way in which the background will show through the letters. And the default again is 100%, which means it's opaque. You notice in this preset, it starts out with a two color gradient. It starts with this um, cream color and ends with almost an orange red color. And then you can also control the gradient direction. Again, these are items you can change. Uh, let's click on here and not have a cream color. Let's try a, uh, well, let's try a, yeah, another darker reddish color here. And again, the results are probably not what I want. Let's try something else. Let me try a lighter one. Let's go, let's try pink. 
And so that gives me another way in which I can change it. I can also change the direction of the gradient. Watch what happens as I move this little wheel around. We'll go to the right. Now we'll go to the bottom. So you can adjust the, the gradient. We can go from a two color gradient to a uniform color to a four color gradient. And uh, this gives me the option of picking four different colors. Right now I've got white on the bottom and I can select a different color. Uh, let's slick a gray on that color corner and turn that on. And so it's a little more on the gray scale over here. Let's turn this one to a yellowish one and click on OK. And so you have the option of changing. You notice here this is yellowish, this is gray, uh, yellow tint over here. Uh, you can change it any way you like, either four color gradient, two color gradient, or none whatsoever. So that's the option you have in this particular feature of your objects. The third one we can look at is called reflection. And in my default, reflection is not uh, selected. I'll click on that, and the reflection gives you a, a distance and an opacity. It's very difficult to see it on the on a black background. You have to first of all turn it on and now you see it's it's kind of like a mirrored floor or waterish kind of a situation. You can change the distance farther and farther away from the object, the opacity, you can make it a mirror image that's real clear or something that's just kind of hints about what you want. I don't use reflection a lot but you might find it useful in some situations. So that's the reflection option. The next one is a shadow. And in this particular preset, it is using a shadow. The shadow right now has a certain distance between uh, the object and the background. And the shadow is a blur, and the shadow happens to be black, and this is the angle. Now we have a black background, so it's harder to see it. So I'll change this to a white shadow. Click on OK. And there is my shadow. And if I want to change the distance, watch what happens. I just reduce it a little bit. And I can also change the direction of the shadow. And I can change the opacity. Again, I can make it very, very distinct, or I can make it very, very indistinct. And again, you can change the color, or you can make it there so there is no fill shadow. A uh, nice feature, and you'll often use this depending on the background that you have behind your uh, title lettering. So that's the shadow option. The next one we're going to look at is border. And again, on this preset, it's using a border. And here it gives the border color. That's the outline around the letters. Borders can also have gradients, either two color, no color, or no, no gradient whatsoever. And this one perhaps happens to have a two color gradient. I can change the direction of the gradient in the border itself. This is different from the previous command. And I can also change the coloring. Let's uh, start this one out. We'll change with a, oh, let's go to a very light, lighter color here. And you can see how the border has changed. And it highlights on one side, a little, little lighter here on the bottom, a little darker up on the the top side. And again, that's because of my angle. I change my angle. I'll change it to right here. And now you see the darker red at the top and the pinkish at the bottom. Again, if I want to change that, let's go to a gray, click on OK, and now I see my border. So uh, again, you can ca cause the border to be very distinct. Right now it's uh, not transparent. I can make it thinner and thinner and thinner and to the eye by changing the opacity. I can make it more indefinite by increasing the blur. It gets more fuzzy. And so that's the options we have on the border in our object. We have another option that is a 3D setting. I can click this on and this can change it when I'm adding more depth in a in a 3D presentation. And uh, you know we can, this is a little harder to see in this particular setting but you can, I don't use 3D a lot. I think I have enough control over other options. I can also use that. 
The last one we have is simply object settings. This gives my position on the screen. It gives the scale. It reminds me I want to maintain the aspect ratio. There is an ease in and ease out, which talks about the scale here. Um, the opacity is set to 100. I can also change it so I can enable or disable keyframes for the property. That's more, um, more an advanced thing, and so is the rotation, where I can deal with the rotation keyframes. Um, I don't generally start out working a lot with the object settings or the 3D settings, but you can explore those any way you want. We hope this survey has been helpful for you.